My name is Karen Wilson. I'm a graduate research assistant at the University of Colorado Boulder, and this work was performed with my advisor, Dr. Hans Peter Schaub. The goal of this work is to develop a system for rendezvous and proximity operations guidance that can account for electrostatic dynamic perturbations in order to minimize the effect of these perturbations on RPO operations. The motivation for this work really comes from a, an end of life scenario in which a servicer is rendezvousing with an uncooperative target in high Earth orbit, particularly geostationary or near geostationary orbits. The spacecraft used for this scenario are based loosely on the NOAA GOES-R weather satellites, which are assumed to be an inner uncooperative target spacecraft, and a servicer which is capable of full six degree of freedom motion based on Northrop's MEV-1 spacecraft. Other work has demonstrated the significant impact of spacecraft charging on proximity operations from a dynamic perspective. While it's long been known that electrostatic perturbations or electrostatic potentials on spacecraft can pose dangerous conditions during rendezvous and proximity operations due to the threat of arcing and electrical damage, this work has demonstrated that heightened levels of spacecraft charging can actually have significant impacts from a dynamic perspective as well. The forces and torques that accumulate between the spacecraft during proximity operations when both spacecraft are charged to significant potentials on the order of kilovolts can result in significant rotational rates on the order of degrees per second accumulating during proximity operations maneuvers, which increases fuel consumption for the servicer and decreases operation safety. These potential levels are quite significant, but have been observed in the past at geostationary orbits, and they are a function of the space weather environment and tend to be more common during heightened solar activity cycles. So the dynamics that we're modeling here are based on linearized hill frame dynamics for translation, where we are additionally assuming that the servicer spacecraft has full six degree freedom control and translational motion is provided by thrusters which saturate at about 0.01 meters per second squared. And our baseline scenario is approximately three hours in duration. Rotational dynamics are based on rigid body kinematics. We've developed a approximate CAD model for the to extract uh, inertia and mass properties for our prototypical spacecraft target, which is based again on the GOES-R target spacecraft, which has a lot of publicly available data, which allows us to develop reasonable mass and inertia property estimates. In addition to electrostatic forces and torques, we're also modeling solar radiation pressure, which is typically considered to be the dominant perturbation at geostationary orbit. We've discretized the spacecraft into phases, and neglected self-shadowing to provide us with a first order approximation. And the goal is not to perfectly model a given scenario, but to instead develop a realistic candidate scenario to evaluate the impact of these perturbations in our guidance methods. The mean torque for this case is approximately 0.5 millinewton meters. Modeling electrostatics is typically more computationally intensive and generally requires the development of a finite element model, which then can be integrated across to evaluate the charge distributions. And from there, we can evaluate the forces and torques. Instead, we're only using the finite element model to initialize our faster, more efficient method based on the method of, or based on the multi-sphere method. So the multi-sphere method enables us to rapidly compute the forces and torques acting between the spacecraft, in this case, by a factor of about 10,000, while sacrificing only a few percent in accuracy compared to the method of moments finite element model. So this enables us to evaluate the force and torque on each spacecraft as a function of different positions. So we can perform sweeps to evaluate the approximate uh, effect of these perturbations on both spacecraft. In this case, we're setting our servicer to 10 meters away from the target, and these are based on iso distances to the nearest surface. So our servicer is 10 meters from the nearest surface on our target spacecraft in all points. The maximum torque observed here is about three millinewton meters for this particular combination of positions and charges on both spacecraft, which is approximately six times larger than the mean SRP perturbation. This results in significant rotational rates during a nominal rendezvous scenario. So in this case, our spacecraft is coming in along a straight line and you can see that there are significant changes to the target's attitude during this, during this approach due to the electrostatic perturbations. 
This is based on both spacecraft being charged to 10 kilovolts in this case. And we observe rotational rays in excess of 0.5 degrees per second at rendezvous. These increases in uh, rotational rate in turn result in significant increases in control effort to track that rotating target. So how can we minimize the effect of these perturbations? Our guidance strategy is based on having a nominal approach, which is essentially this straight line here in which our servicer will approach our target with three hold points along the way. And these holds enable us to perform navigation checkouts, have some sort of ground in the loop approval, or other things that may be relevant to a servicing scenario with an uncooperative target, followed by a 30 minute hold at one meter for robotic arms to grapple the target. However, if we have charged spacecraft, as we just saw, this approach turns into a much more complicated problem, which the target obtains significant rotational rates. And therefore, our servicer has to translate in order to track the rotating target position in our target fixed reference frame. Our translational guidance strategy is based on the idea that we can choose a path to minimize the torques and parts of the target at any given time point. And this becomes more complicated because we generally have constraints on the trajectory that we're trying to achieve during a rendezvous and proximity operations mission. This is often imposed by constraints involving line of sight between a sensor and a particular point on the target, such as the docking port. You can see in this figure that there are significant differences between our minimum torque position and our maximum torque position. In this case, almost three orders of magnitude. So what we can do is in establish a sampling-based strategy where we say, this is our acceptable range. In this case, this circle corresponds to a 25 degree cone that we want to approach the spacecraft in. And then we can apply a sampling-based method to determine the best position within this. The advantage of a sampling-based method compared to a traditional optimization is that we can perform this in a finite controlled time. And that time is actually deterministic from run to run while minimizing the total miss. So what we do is sample across 50 points in this constraint cone. And this is performed at each guidance update time step, which could occur as frequently as once per second, or much less frequently, perhaps once every 100 seconds, as we obtain new estimates of the target and spacecraft potentials. This approach allows us to update online our ideal position to minimize the torques and parts to the target as a function of our updated pose estimates for a target spacecraft or electrostatic potentials, which of course evolve as a function of the space weather environment. However, this only provides us with a three degree of freedom constraint. It provides translational guidance, but we also require an attitude solution. In this case, we assume that our sensors on the docking face must remain oriented towards the docking port during rendezvous, which allows us a further two degrees of freedom to be constrained. However, this leaves one rotational degree of freedom where we rotate around the line of sight to the docking port, which is unconstrained. However, torques around just this one degree of freedom can vary by over 20%, in this case for 10 kilovolt spacecraft with 10, 10 meters of separation. So we can then apply a, a sampling based method again, to each of these or as a function of the rotation around this line of sight vector to determine what our ideal position is in the full six degree of freedom solution. There are a couple of prior methods that have been proposed for sensing electrostatic potentials remotely on spacecraft, which would be applied to this method because potential based guidance and force modeling is useless without accurate knowledge of the potential on both spacecraft. Spacecraft have long been able to evaluate their own potential relative to the plasma environment, but it's only recently that methods have been proposed to evaluate the potential on a spacecraft from tens of meters away, which is required in a rendezvous scenario. In this case, one method is based on evaluating the X-ray spectra that are generated from a target spacecraft when it interacts with energetic electrons, while the other one evaluates the electrons that emerge from the spacecraft surface as a function of photoelectric emission or secondary electron emission. If we evaluate the effectiveness of this method during a 10 kilovolt scenario, 
we can compare it to the nominal rendezvous approach where we don't have any sort of understanding of what the potential is on both spacecraft. And we follow that naive approach where we come in on a straight line. For this case, final rotational rates are about 0.18 meters per second, while our total delta V is about 0.28 meters per second, or our final rotational rates are 0.18 degrees per second, sorry. Our total rotational or total delta V is about 0.28 meters per second with a final position error of almost eight centimeters based on the control means that we selected for our nonlinear Cartesian feedback control scheme. However, when we apply a sampling-based rendezvous approach to minimize the torque imparted at each time step, the final rotational rate is about 0 0.08 degrees per second, less than half of that from the naive approach. Additionally, the total fuel consumption was likewise about half of what it was in the naive approach, and the final positional error was just five millimeters instead of eight centimeters for, again, the same set of feedback control gains. So this really indicates that we have a method that can effectively be used to reduce the impact of electrostatic perturbations during proximity operations. And we're working on a range of future directions to extend this to detumbling a rotating object during approach, or to compare this to a, a more rigorously globally optimal trajectory solution. Instead of updating the trajectory each time step, we can optimize it across the entire trajectory using a, a pseudo-spectral co-location-based method and compare that as a perfect solution. However, these methods typically require advanced knowledge of the potential states of both spacecraft through all time, which is not always feasible, especially due to the complex dynamics that underlie spacecraft charging and are also a function of the space weather environment, which can be quite unpredictable, even over several hours. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time and also welcome any questions. Uh, email me at any time. I would be more than happy to engage in conversation and respond as quickly as I can. Thank you very much.